It is June 27th, 2021, and uh, the last time I painted on my um, 20 to 30 year loom, <laughs> if you know the backstory, it was started 30 years ago at the World Championships as a demonstration. So. I've taken a break since January 15th um, to run the Wildfowl Carving Championships uh, virtual championship event uh, that happened in February and in March and uh, been kept busy ever since. Um, had a huge garage sale. And uh, now I'm going to get back to finishing Wayne's Loon. This loon is going to the former employer of my mother, who is now in memory care. And uh, he enabled her entire company, River City Glass, enabled my mother to work far beyond um, the years that I think she should have been able to work if she or would have been able to work if she didn't have their support so they gave her rights to work and treated her so well that um, this is going to be a gift to Wayne the owner um, of River City Glass when it's done and we're getting close I've got all the scapular spots um, initially laid in the next step will be I will take care of these uh, scapular, uh, in between the scapular feathers uh, spots. Uh, and then I think I will be moving on to working on the head uh, and adding um, feather detail on the head. Right now it's just got this kind of an ugly blue-gray base coat. Um, and uh, so when I put on my initial coats, the, the browns in the very first base coats, I use straight Grumbacher turpent, um, Grumbacher oil painting medium number one. After that first uh, base coat, I cut the medium with turpentine, Grumbacher turpentine, and I'm talking good stuff. Um, it's important you date it and it's important that it doesn't turn yellow. It's not in the can that they used to uh, put it in. The cans rust and it turns the um, turpentine into varnish. It's just really strange but um, always use fresh products when it comes to your mediums. Um, Older oil paint's not so bad because uh, it will uh, have a shelf life of many, many years if you treat it right. So, um, because I've already put on a coat, oh, my base coat's on. Let's see if I can get this safety open. There we go. This is a brand new bottle. I love the smell of this stuff. It's got a lemony smell to it. So, thinking about how long you're going to sit and paint, because this does not store well once it's been mixed, I put in maybe a teaspoon of the medium. I'm going to try to keep them in this pie plate in case I spill. And then here's the turpentine Grumbacher. I'm going to put the same amount in. Oh, it's a little bit more, so I'll just. Uh, you can keep this for a little while if you 
cover it in between sittings and you're working uh, a few days in a row but for it to um, last outside of a couple three days um, is not really gonna happen so as you can see now I've got my 50 50 this is where I will put my 100% Rumbacher turpentine when I need it, but right now I'm just, it makes no sense for me to stick it here and not use it and let it evaporate. So instead, I'm going to work with the 50-50. I'm using um, Gamblin Fast Matte. It dries faster. It's an alkyd based oil. And uh, for me, when I used to compete, having doing my final um, painting in a hotel room or even at home before the show, sometimes was pushed up to the final days. Um, before the show and because of that it was important for me to have an oil because I like painting in oils that would dry um, even if it was painted uh, say 12 hours previous um, to the competition when it's going to hit the water so I don't put out a whole lot as you can see, as it dried on the plate, and it's still soft underneath here. Look at that. It dries yellow by comparison to the way it comes out of the tube. So you need to know this if having a hard white is really important to you. If you want vivid white, you might need to use um, a real oil. For me, this is white enough. Um, when it's dried. And uh, the I like to use a slant tip uh, when I'm laying in my uh, spots because uh, this out of the way for now because then uh, I can turn it on the side and have a real thin coverage or I can lay it flat and get wide coverage. So let's get this zoomed in. See what I'm doing? Now, I'm taking my ring off because when I handle the bird, the ring can take little chunks of paint off. So I don't want that to happen. And the consistency of my paint. of my paint is going to be like cream don't want it really thick you can see that was one pass that I did before and it's quite light so that's pretty important I keep a paper towel handy and then I'm also going to put one underneath the loom so that I have a surface to touch my brush to and wipe off excess paint. That's very helpful for me. So, <clears throat> I know it's hard to see the consist consistency because 
and painting on a white tagboard surface so that the color on my palette shows through. And get that going. Some light in on my situation here. Uh, the smaller ones are always more difficult to paint. And uh, again, we're just laying in little spots on these little cape feathers. And you're only seeing, no, you can't see very well. You're only seeing one side of the feather, which means you're only seeing one or a portion of one spot because the other spot is covered with the feather on top of it. Some cases you'll see uh, both spots showing on a feather which is more exposed. I carved every single one of these feathers in, but I never textured the bird. Again, we're laying these in with thin consistency paint. Because we want it to look soft. I want it to look soft in the end. So those ones are going to be the most difficult, those little tiny ones, and as I move on, it'll get a little bit easier, which is where this slant tip really comes in handy. And be sure that you're doing the right the same size spots on each row so they're consistent Good brushes, especially these natural bristle, bristled brushes like this is uh, probably horse hair. Uh, actually have some tooth to each one of the bristles in the brush and the tooth actually helps hold the paint in the brush so that you don't have to keep going back and forth to the palette to reload it can get kind of old um, that's where also Kalinsky sables um, the rounds the 
um, come in handy is they like say if you're doing a bunch of vermiculating they will deliver the paint off of the brush and hold a great deal more than other brushes because of the tooth of the natural fiber of the Kalinsky sable. Each row getting a little bit easier to paint the spots in. Because we're getting a little bit bigger. <laughs> Each row. So as you're painting on the, the next side, the opposite side, be sure to look at, at the first side you already painted and get those spots to be the same. Tam Brunet said that he couldn't understand why I like doing loons because he only ever did one and it was a pin that he, a necklace, a pendant, a flying loon that he gifted me and said the spots drove him nuts. <laughs> He'd never ever do another loon because of that. Well, that's kind of funny. It's true, I do like doing looms. Minnesota State Bird, but that isn't why. Just, that's a coincidence actually, for me. I like the bird because it's in the oldest birds species still alive that was here when the dinosaurs were here. That's how old they are. Well, there's something to be said about that. Species that can survive the changes of the earth over millions of years is uh, pretty special. See a little bit of that 
other spot it's covered by the scat feathers scapular feathers can't forget to put those in it might only be a thin little wisp of the other spot showing on the other half of the feather. I don't always go back into the medium, but when I'm pulling more paint from the little pile of paint that I have, that's when I do. So now these feathers are starting to... If I were to... Uh, do this on a smooth bird, I will, would have had to define the outer edge of each one of these feathers in carving each one that's been done for me so um, there's that step saved having carved all the these spots in I'm, I'm sorry feathers in Kind of evening out the whites here. first pass you have to think about the size and the shape and the placement the second pass you've already done that so all you have to do is really put the color in the right place so it's actually much easier on subsequent passes and the difference in the Brightness of the white has more to do with that was when I went back to the palette and got new paint. So it's just brighter. Now, if I were to have used straight medium <clears throat> on the second pass here, that I'm, or this evening out, I should say, it's not so much a second pass, it would have removed the paint that I put on before because it would cut it. The 
50-50 turpentine keeps that from happening. And it's a good idea just to let those passes, first, second, third, whatever, set up before you go back on them because the paint sitting there on top of the layers below it actually softens those layers below it. And so you need to give it time to set up or you'll have a mess. leaving little puddles like these oh, you can see that got more medium than you need and you can correct that by adding a little bit more paint and then dabbing your brush on the paper towel to get rid of the uh, excessive paint For this pass, just kind of matching things up.
Okay. That's good enough for now. When you come back on your subsequent passes, you'll see, like right here, I should have just a little bit of that second spot showing. And I wouldn't worry about inconsistencies like what I have here. Again, these are all going to be solid spots by the time I'm done. It's just easier if they can all be consistently the same color. But if they aren't, you just come back one more time on the ones that aren't. <clears throat> so, since I've got the white out, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay in... will be good. You wanna this is an older Kalinsky sable. Which um isn't really pointy. It's pointy but it's not pointy like a Kalinsky sable is when it's brand new. This is the 8408 Raphael favorite amongst wildfowl carvers and master painters. So the next step I'm going to uh, take is laying in the first spots on the side pockets and wing feathers. Now on these <clears throat> On these uh, breast feather tracts, the spots trail off from being a row to individual spots that become more feather than spot. Um, I want to be sure you can see what I'm doing, and I don't think I'm achieving that right now. So, I'm this. It's this Change the camera. Sometimes what happens is it says uh, your camera is being manually operated and it shuts off my remote control that I use to operate the camera when I'm doing these videos. So, I identify each one of these feathers that I carved in. have a spot which I don't want it to be um, too prominent this first time around but I do want them to show like this Let's 
who might not be pointy enough. This will be good for when the spots get a little larger, but let me find something a little more. smaller. This will do. This is a three-aught fine liner spotter, they say. Oh, how appropriate. They call it a spotter. <laughs> there we go. This is better. You don't want too much paint on your brush. But you want the spot that you're painting to be the right shape. Have a couple going into the cape here that have no spots on them whatsoever because the slant tip brush was just a little too big for that. So catch those up. keep going down this one side but as even when I carve I like to work evenly from side to side just in case I have to stop for some reason unexpectedly and that happens it's hard to pick up and have the same paint strokes and attitude that I did before, especially if something important happened. Good news, bad news, things will change your attitude and the way you hold the brush and the way you paint. You might hold the brush tighter and stiffer if you're angry. So, being aware I'm trying to focus in here. Um, being aware of your uh, state of mind can tell you a lot of things. Maybe you shouldn't be painting if you were in a really great mood and happy and carefree and then a bad phone call comes and things aren't as happy and carefree as they were the last time you sat down, you might find your painting or your carving will be different because of that.
I'm going to take these all the way down and then I'll switch to the other side. And again, if these spots are a little brighter on this side than they are on the other, it won't matter. I'll try to keep them even. But in the end, if you've gone over them accordingly, you'll have removed the difference and they'll all look the same. You take the time to lay out your feather pattern, whether you carve it or you draw it with paint. It'll save you so much time. And, uh, be a guide. Otherwise, you're kind of hit and miss. And, uh, wouldn't necessarily be the right placement if you weren't paying attention. How these feathers were carved. Every spot, I'm sorry, every feather has two spots on it. Except the primaries, the tail feathers, and the breasts are white and they work their way into the two spot pattern of feathers as they go down the body. I learned this when I had a specimen lent to me by the state of Minnesota years and years ago. I can't do that anymore. But I was fortunate enough to have common loon specimen that was turned in by a citizen that had been found on the side of the road. They often mistake the road when it's very hot. They'll see that mirage effect. It looks like water on the road and then they'll land and then they, they cannot take off. They have to have water to gain, to fly. They have to run on the top of that water to be able to take off. So if they don't have water, they're dead in the water, or dead out of the water actually. So when that happens, citizens will find these loons that have passed. We turn them into the Department of Natural Resources. 
I would go and measure them and photograph them, but they'd have to take them out of the freezer for me. So finally they said, how about we just give you one to have at home? And they gave me a special letter that Carol Henderson with the DNR was the one who facilitated that for me. Okay. Spangled effect is starting to happen. Go a little bit further on this one, this side. Make sure you guys can see. I always say that with each paint stroke my carving comes more and more into focus. It's blurry, I'm just kind of blocking things in. Personally I can see it finished in my head. And from the moment I start designing it before the clay model. I'm out of view again. Okay, I'm going to be continuing on. Took a little bit of a break. And I'm going to continue on these spots that I 
started laying in. Sometimes it's especially a challenge to get everything set up so that you can see what I'm doing. And I can see what I'm doing. And the light is right. Coupled with everything else. And if you carved your feathers in feather tracts correctly, the pattern of the feathers looks like little trails because it is feather tracked oriented and we'll compensate for that you're just going to have a bunch of spots that have no rhyme or reason Consider where the quill lies, which is so fine, it looks like a barb at this point, so I won't be painting quills in. Maybe some of the last feathers on the back of the side pocket. And then it'll be appropriate places on the um, scapular and cape. Well, these spots get a little bit larger as the feathers get larger just like they did on the uh, scapular and cape and back feathers so I'll go down to the belly feathers here on the side and then I'm going to switch and catch the other side up to here.
just laid in so I know where they go. this side. So not always are you going to see both spots on the feather when it comes to the side pockets. Oftentimes a portion of that will be cover a spot will be covered by the feather on top of it. Again, just like with the uh, other feathers with spots on the loon. We'll probably be fast forwarding through some of this. You need to take a second look at how something was carved. Put the spots in the correct place. between enough and too much paint on your brush. You'll get the hang of it though after a while. So have to be careful where you lay your hand to support 
on your paintbrush because you could be laying it right in your recently painted feather spots and then pick up paint or smear it so you gotta be a little bit more careful about that when you're painting in oils than with acrylics but even if it's acrylics that can make a mess if you're not careful And you can see right away that I have way too much paint on it. And on the side pocket feathers, not that you ever see it, there's a third spot of white. But unless you've been able to put your hands on an actual specimen. You would never see that in the wild on a live bird because it's too deep underneath the feathers above it to show. It's kind of a cool thing to know though, especially if you end up splitting some feathers um, to make it show. That could be very interesting. Okay. Oops, got just beyond the side pocket on this side. So I'm going to catch the other side up. Maybe zoom out just a touch to make sure that. I'm in view. Again, you want to make sure that your size of your spots are the same as on the other side at this particular point of the side pocket and again they will grow in size um, as you get to the larger feathers toward the back of the side pocket
the second pass will give you an opportunity to make um, adjustments to size and shape. I think I mentioned that a little bit earlier, but I'm saying it again because I want you to panic that you don't have everything exactly the same. Is the other side because you can make up that difference. Pay attention to the feathers because you spent time carving those feathers in in a particular layout to show feather tracks and if you don't put the spots on a loon in the right places with the right number of feathers flowing on the right feather tracks, it's not going to look so much like a loon, a real loon. Interpretation of a loon, maybe. See a lot of that. move pretty fast when you get to these larger feathers, larger dots. Well, that takes care of the side pocket layout. On both sides. <clears throat> Alright, so the next set of spots will do. here on these tertials and secondaries. I gotta make sure I got you guys in view here. Okay, maybe I need to. Thank you. 